there. Thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from the UK. Today we're going to create a um, Easter card. So Easter's uh, this coming weekend, so we've got a few days left and I just thought it'd be quite fun to um, to do one. Um, but also um, it can be adapted for a birthday card or anything, so it doesn't necessarily have to be Easter if you don't send those. So I'm going to be using um, our beautiful daffodil, daffodil? Daff daffodil even daydream stamp set um got crocodiles and daffodils muddled up then um so this is um one which um is is just beautiful it's really lovely and it's got some amazing dyes with it as well you may have seen a couple of other projects that i've done with this um and i'm pleased to say that it is staying with us so that's really good news um and i'm just going to be using one of the little happy off of create with friends which is another amazing set um which i absolutely love so we're going to be talking textures a little bit today. Now I love textures on anything really because I like things to be quite tactile um, and I like things to to look interesting and and sometimes we can create things which can sometimes be a little bit flat um, sometimes that's good it just depends on what we're trying to create really so today we're just talking a little bit about textures and how we can build textures into our projects so I'm going to be using a mixture of different things today just to give it a little bit of a lift so you can see how um, I've put this together so um, this is in my head, this project, so hopefully it's all going to come good um, and then we'll have a nice finished card at the end. So the first thing you're going to need is a card base. Now I'm in the UK so this is our standard C6 card um, and this measures 21 centimetres across by 14.85 deep and it's scored at 10 and a half to give us our card base now if you're in a different market you can just use your standard card and then you want to create um, another layer which in this case is just half a centimetre smaller so this is 10 centimetres by 14.35 but again, if you're in a different market um, um, and you're using imperial measurements, perhaps make yours quarter of an inch smaller. You just want a very small border on it. That's all we're looking for. And these are both in um, thick basic white. I've used thick because um, it will help to take, I'm going to be using some embossing paste. So embossing paste um, ha has a sort of water content to a degree and it can make your card sort of um, warp a little bit. So I'm using the thick just to avoid that. So I'm going to put my card to one side and I, well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to mask off a section of my card. Now you can mask off as much or as little as you want. I basically want um, a border which I would say is probably going to be about three and a half centimetres. I want it just, just beyond a third probably. So I'm going to take some um, some tape. Now you can use whatever you wish. This is our sort of post-it note type product on a roll. Um, but you can use post-it notes, you can use um, a low-tack tape, whatever you've got really. And I'm just lining it up on my grid sheet here. And I'm going to, I think, stick it here, which is about three and a half centimetres. I just want to make sure I've got it nice and straight. And I'll make sure this edge is straight before I commit myself to it. There we go. And this is good as well because it's sticky all along, but also I've made it longer so that I can stick it to my board and that I know is going to stay in place. <clears throat> so we're going to be using a few colours today. Now, although we're using daffodils, Daffodil Delight is quite um, a bright, acidic sort of yellow. Um, so when I'm using something, especially like for Easter and things like that, I like it to be a little bit softer. So I'm going to be using So Saffron. And I'm also going to be using a bit of the Pow Papaya as well. So I'm going to start with my So Saffron. And I'm going to be using one of our blending brushes, but you can use whatever you wish. So whatever you've got to hand and what is ever your favoured um, blending tool, really. So some people prefer to use sponges, daubers, whatever. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. So I'm just going to pick up some of this colour. Now, what I tend to do is 
once I've picked up the ink, I'm just going to mix it into my lid a little bit just to make it not so harsh. And I'm going to start on this edge here and then I'm going to pull in, in small circular motions, my ink onto my card here. You might be able to hear I've still got a little bit of a cold in my voice. It seems to be lingering a little bit, which is really annoying, but it's getting there slowly. So can you see how soft that is? As I say, as much as I love Daffodil Delight, it is quite an acidic yellow where this is just really soft and I think it really loans itself for projects um, of this nature, really. So I'm just building it up and I want it to be darker here and we're going lighter as we go up and then we're going to add also some powerful pie to it as well. So again, I always start down at that bottom corner because that's where I want it the darkest. So it's best to get rid of most of my ink at that point and then I know that I'm not going to make it too dark going up the top. But I do want quite a nice layer on this. A nice layer but soft layer, if that makes sense. So automatically we're starting to build texture. Now this is obviously a flat texture because we're just going ink onto card. But what it is doing, because we're giving it this sort of ombre effect, we're actually getting automatically some kind of texture and depth into our card. So that is what we're trying to achieve. So I want it just softer up here. And then I'm just going to go into this bottom area again. And this time I'm going to work it quite hard. I want to get down some more colour. So we've got that more of a contrast. Just lifting that up slightly to the top. One more. Just down here. Okay, so you can just make sure it's nicely blended and that will give you that really nice sort of ombre look to it. It can look a little bit patchy at times, but as you build up the layers, you'll see that actually the, the patchiness will go. Um, and also we're going to be adding some other textures on top. So I'm taking Pal Papaya now. I'm actually going to use my same brush because it's a similar sort of tonal colour and it's going to lift some of this yellow off with it and that's absolutely fine. And then I'll wash it afterwards um, and then it'll be good to go again. Okay, so I'm just going to, again, just lift some of that colour. And I don't want too much of this, so I'm just going to work in this bottom right corner to start with. Now, this is quite pale, so we don't, you know, we don't want to build it up too much. We just want that tinge of orange in this corner. And quite often you don't actually notice it until it's actually started to build up more. So, you know, just take it slowly because you can always add more ink. You can't take it away. So just, can you see how that... It's just more orangey down that bottom section. So I'm quite happy with that. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that as it is. Pop those to one side. And now what I want to think about is actually adding... It's got a little black fleck, that's it. So now what I want to do is actually add some of our paste. And I'm going to be using one of our masks. <clears throat> so this mask comes from um, our Plenty of Patterns decorative masks. You can use any, whatever you've got is absolutely fine. And we're going to be using some of it in white and some of it in, in sort of a, a yellowy tinge. So what I'm gonna do next um, is mix up a little bit of paste. Now, when you do this, you really don't need a great deal. So I'm just gonna take a piece of my um, paste. Now this is the um, shimmering um, one. So this has got the little sparkle in it, which is really lovely. I'm going to mix up a little bit just on my mat here so I don't need a great deal and I'm going to just drop in one little drop of so saffron reinca if you haven't got the reinca then you could um, put some ink onto a block 
and mix this on the block and then that will mix up nicely for you. So I don't want this too, too yellowy. I just wanted it to have a bit of a yellow tinge. In fact, I might just add a tiny, tiny bit more. But again, a little bit at a time because then you can always add more. Equally, if it goes the other way, you can add some more white in as well. So just, you know, play around with it until you're happy with the colour, really. And I'm going to just take a tiny bit more white. So, I mean, it's easy to go the other way. And I'm not too worried if it's not blended in completely. I'm quite happy the way it is. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this texture. So I'm going to start off just placing it on top and I'm very lightly going to add some paste. Now I'm not looking particularly where I'm putting this. I want it to be um, sort of a, a half finished texture. So I want it to be solid down this part, but then I will have, as it goes out to the edges, I will have like half flowers and things like that and that's absolutely fine that helps to add to all that texture it makes it look really nice okay so i'm not worried if i've got parts of flowers not covered i'm just literally just wiping it over the top okay so I'm just going to lift that off. Now, can you see that texture starting to come through? And we've got these part bits here. I love that. That's really what I'm looking for. I don't want it to be too um, solid. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe my palette knife. And very carefully, I'm going to lift the tape off. So I've got completely white under here. And you can see there you've got that beautiful colour. So now what I want to do, I'm going to take my mask again. And this time I want to mask up into this top area. And I'm going straight in with white on this occasion. Okay. Now I need to be a little bit careful of that. So that's fine. I'm going to bring it down as far as I can. And I'm going to take some white paste. And again... I'm not worrying that I'm actually got half of a flower or anything like that. I'm just literally popping it down. Okay, so I'm going to do another little bit over here, just in this corner. Again, not fully pieces, just a little bit in there. And then over on this corner, I'm just going to grab a little bit more of this yellow might be a little bit lighter because I've still got white on my palette knife. Oops, try not to go over the edge like I have just done there. But we are going to have some flowers there, so don't worry about that. Okay, so you can see we've got a right mixture now of all the different layers of colour. So, best thing to do when you um, actually have finished using your paste is to clear up straight away because it does dry quite quickly um, and once it's dry it's actually hard to um, to wash off so I'm quickly going to go and wash this and then I will come back to you okay <clears throat> so this is our card when it was finished you do get these little edges on it so I recommend that you just rub your finger along the edge and just remove any little rough bits and that will get rid of those. And I'm going to pop that to one side. And then we're going to start off with um, our little flower that we're going to be doing. So we're actually going to be using the daffodils, <clears throat> as I said. So I've used this large one from here. I don't know how well you can see that. But I've actually heat embossed it in white, just onto basic white card. And we're going to colour that in just using our ink pads. So I'm going to grab myself um, a block, in fact a couple of blocks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my green. 
So I'm using garden green and I'm just going to add some of the ink onto my block. I prefer to do it this way because then my block's not left open um, and it's all closed up and we've got, <clears throat> hopefully we should have sufficient on here. So what I'm going to do is bring in the um, stamp set itself so you can hopefully see um, and also to help me to see which parts are green. So I'm using a really fine paintbrush for this because we've got some very fine areas. And what I'm going to do is just water into some of those areas before I pick up some green ink. So now where I've watered that, I'm going to just slowly spread the colour around. I want this to be quite vibrant, but I am going to add some more uh, darker ink at the bottom just to get some texture. I'm going to do the same with this little piece here. Now because I've embossed it in white, what's happening is that the water will repel off any of the edges, which is great because then that makes our life much, much easier. Again, just literally dampening it. It just helps to move that ink around. And can you see that's lightened up quite a bit? That's quite nice because that gives us our next texture. You want your brush to be damp but not wet. If it's too wet, then you'll find that you'll just um, flood all the areas. So again, I'm just going to work out which bits are green. So this is just normal basic white. This isn't the thick basic white. I find the normal works better for this technique. Um, it's just, it's not quite so absorbent and uh, it just sort of works a lot better. Again. Now can you see that repelling off those edges? That's what we want. Because we want the colour just to sit in there. And then I'm going to let it dry. I'm really bad for using the back of my hand for wiping my brush but of course you can use a kitchen towel or tissue whichever you prefer. Again, I've got a little piece over here. It is hard to see without looking at this piece here where it actually goes to. But this is why I'm starting with the green because then I can see where all my petals are. So I've got one here. So if your brush gets too dry, it won't spread the colour, but if it's too wet, then it spreads it too much. So you just need to find that sort of happy balance, really. And again, you can always go back and add layers, so don't, you know, don't overcook it to start with.
okay so I think I have got all the pieces that I need in green but I will just leave that to hand because sometimes um, you find that you haven't quite got them all and this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of pal papaya and I'm going to do a mixture of flowers on here so this is going to be my pal papaya flower It's a little bit more forgiving when you're using a lighter colour because obviously um, it's not going to sort of show as much if you go where you shouldn't. So don't, um, you don't need to worry quite so much. So this is the trumpet of my flower. And again, I'm just going to add in some depth. Now the depth will give you that extra texture. So it will start to give it some, um, looks like it's coming off the page almost. Now I want these pieces here to remain white. But of course being white on white, they are going to disappear a little bit. So what I want to do is just to mix a really light wash of pal papaya. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water and just pick up a little bit of colour. I don't want a lot. I just want it to just show a little bit on those edges. So it just gives you that shape of that actual flower. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do some um, yellow daffodils. So hopefully with the combination of the two, it'll actually sort of lift it as well. So I'm going to take another block. So this time we are with So Saffron. And again, I think I'm going to start with this little bud that we have here. We had a little debate in class the other day whether the half of the bud should be green or whether it should be all yellow. And I think we came to the conclusion it depends on how close the bud is to actually blooming. So I think our answer was it doesn't matter. Okay, and then I'm going to move over to this one here. And what I want to do is, it's going to be all yellow, but I want to make the trumpet a little bit darker. So I'm going to rem push some of this colour onto here, and then we'll make a lighter wash for the actual leaves. Again, don't be frightened to add some more depth because, as I say, this is the trumpet part and we want this to be quite strong. Okay, so I'm just going to push some of this colour away. And then I'm just going to mix up some lighter yellow. Now, obviously, we want it to be yellow but we want it to be lighter than our trumpet so I'm just going to give them all a little bit of a wash to start with okay and then I'm going to start just bringing in some darker color in the centers because that's where our shadow would be 
<clears throat> do apologise my stupid little tickle every now and then. Hopefully next week it will be gone completely. It's been very annoying. So there we go, that's one of our daffodils. And then, oh, I can see a piece of green I missed. See, that that's why you have to keep your palettes close because you do sometimes miss pieces. A pretty little stamp this. Daffodils are very happy flowers. Always make you smile. We have a lot growing wild in the uh, forests and hedgerows around here and it's, it's just beautiful to see them. Okay let's just bring that green back in. So can you see <clears throat> this is the part I've missed here quite an important part because it's the part that leads to the flower. It just goes to show how easily it can be missed. So now that I've got my main colour onto these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to add in some more depth. And again, my brush is virtually dry. I'm literally just bringing in some darker shades just to add that depth in and again on the trumpet I need to really make this quite dark now Okay, and I'm going to bring the Pal Papaya back in. I actually think I'm going to make the leaves a bit more yellowy. The Pal Papaya, the white on white, <clears throat> is not showing up <clears throat> as much as I would have liked it to, really. So I'm just going to take some more of our yellow. I'm going to keep the trumpet in Pal Papaya because they come in all so many different colours. And that will just make it pop out of that page a little bit more. So if I had a different <clears throat> coloured outline, so if it had a black outside line or something like that, then obviously it would show up that much better. But I think no, yellow is, is much better. But that gives it that depth again. There we go, so I think that's quite nice. I will clear those up in a while. So now that that's done, I'm gonna bring my card back in here. So this is going to sit at this little angle here. And I think it'd be nice if we can elevate it and put it onto some dimensionals. So I'm just gonna grab some of those. And what I also want to do is to wrap some twine around this middle section and I'm going to be using the um, silver twine which comes from the Simply Elegant trim so you get a silver and a gold uh, this is a brand new pack because I used my last one up just the other day so I should have found the end shouldn't I really before we started
Aha, there we go. So I'm just going to trim a piece off because I don't want to be dealing with the whole roll. And what I want to do is I'm going to wrap this around here two, maybe three times. That looks quite nice. Oops. Just so it looks like it's sort of hand tied, really. Now this twine does have a mind of its own because it's um, it's obviously metallic, so it does tend to bounce around a little bit. So I'm going to tie it in a double knot, and then I know it's going to stay where I've put it. And you can either tie it as a bow, or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the ends. I won't waste these pieces. You'll see in a second I'm going to add some more bits onto our page. So this is going to sit just here. So as I say this is covering this little section here that we lost earlier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist some of this just behind where that is going to go. Even if I've got little pieces like this, I still keep them because um, it's amazing how um, how little you can make go a long way. So if you were just wanting a little accent in with something, um, it's something you can use quite easily. we go I think that's nice okay so I'm just going to add some dimensionals to the back of my daffodil or what did I call it earlier daffodil it was wasn't it I'm putting a quite a lot on here I know it's quite extravagant but I really don't want this to get damaged so I'm making sure that I've got quite enough on there just to make sure that doesn't happen and then also going to add a little piece up here and onto my stem here So I'm going to pop these onto the top. Now obviously my um, embossing paste has had an opportunity to dry now. So I know that I'm not going to get that everywhere. So that's absolutely fine. I'm going to bring my card base in. So this is going to glue flat onto here. But you can see how pretty it looks um, with it it's sort of popping off the page. Now the actual... Um, greeting that I've chosen to use from here is um, some dies that um, we've had around for quite some time but they've got some really lovely um, sort of greetings in them and I've chosen the Easter and what I've done is I've actually cut this die three times from thick basic white and then I've stuck them on top of each other. Now, if you use our adhesive sheets, this makes that job really, really easy. Um, you could also use our um, foam um, pads, um, the solid ones which we could um, also use to cut out but it's very fine and I find it's just easier just to cut it and stick it together. Um, that's my preference, you can choose whatever you wish. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick this down because otherwise it's going to keep popping up at me. Now I can feel that this is still a little bit damp in places so ideally I would have left this to dry a little while before sticking it down onto my card but provided I'm very careful I should be okay. So we've got these lovely textures of our embossing paste in the different colours. We've got our textures with the heat embossing here. We've got more texture with our silver thread 
um, running around here. Um, it's all about textures and layers, and I think that's that's the key. So I have got um, a little happy, which I cut out onto um, black card, heat embossed in white on black card, and then I have my Easter. So it's just now a case of me deciding where I want this to go. In my head, I had it down here. But I think it's already quite busy down here. So I think I'm going to actually pop mine up here where I had it just a moment ago. And then have my happy just like that. I think there's enough going on down here to kind of um, not have to, to need any more there at all. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm just using just normal PVA glue. I tend not to use um, our Tombow for this, only because, as you know, it remains tacky. So by nor normal PVA means that it will dry clear and there won't be any tackiness. And I'm actually going to grab a pair of tweezers to do this with. Oops. <laughs> it's alive. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this on here. Now I like the white offsetting against the yellow in the background there. Okay. And I'm going to keep this flat because I think that again there's enough going on for it just to warrant to be flat. And I'm going to hold this up just slightly whilst I stick that down. And there we go. So the next choice is whether you fancy having some little gems or something. I love a good gem. Um, I'm not happy with this the way this is sitting here. Can you see how it's popped out? Again, I'm just going to trim that. And I'm going to pull that out. And leave that as that is, I think. That's better. If you get any little glue pieces around the edges, you can just push them around and they'll get rid of. Okay, so did I say yes to gems? I can't remember. I tell you what, I'm going to add some of our beautiful brushed butterflies. These are so pretty and they're so um, they're so delicate that I think they add a really nice touch. And I'm not worried. Gold and silver together doesn't bother me. Look at some of our papers. Some of them are absolutely beautiful and gold and silver are together. So again, just a couple of little butterflies. I'm going to put another one up the top. And there we go. So that is our happy Easter card. It's pretty much as I had it in my head apart from the position of my greeting. Um, I did anticipate that being down the bottom here, but I think actually that makes it um, balance better. So I hope you like that. Um, as I say, have a go with different textures. Textures can be created in so many different ways. We've also got our embossing folders. Um, we have um, die cuts which you could stick on to our, our sheets to create a background so there's loads and loads of different ways to create texture we can also create texture with um household things which will be um i'll come back and do that another day because that's really good fun so uh yeah i hope you like that and um i'll see you again next week take care bye